This is an FRG ministry production with the support of our ministry partners and donors. Happy Feast of the Assumption, a beautiful feast of Our Lady, Our Lady who is confirmed as the Mother of God. Today, during this feast, we're going to be praying for you, for your intentions, for all of the needs of all of your family. This is a wonderful feast celebrated all around the world. I am Maltese and in Malta, the country where I come from, we celebrate this feast greatly. So I'm united with all the Maltese people and all those who are celebrating this wonderful feast on this Feast of the Assumption. On behalf of FRG Ministry, thank you for joining us for this time of prayer. We're grateful for you. We're thankful for your presence here with us today. We're going to offer our prayers for you, as I said, families and all those in need. I invite you also to consider prayerfully, even throughout this Mass, whether you're able to support our ministry. This is a critical time for us, for all of the world, but particularly for our ministry. This ministry cannot survive without your generosity. If you're able to support us as a ministry partner, please go to frgministry.com forward slash donate and click on ongoing donation. If you're able to give us a one-off donation, this will be greatly helpful for us. Also in September, we're heading off to mission in India. We need your support as well to be able to help the poor, to help those in need. Let us together now bring our prayers to the Lord through this holy mass. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're all living all. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As we celebrate this holy mystery today on the Feast of the Assumption, I'm going to be praying for you, for families, for those in need, those who are struggling. This is a beautiful time for us to turn to the Lord through the intercession of Mary, our mother, our mother who loves us and always draws us not to herself, but always points us to Jesus. So as we begin this time of worship, let us call to mind, our sins. Lord, you forgive us our sins, no matter how far we stray. Lord, have mercy. For those times we didn't stop, we didn't repent, we didn't turn away from our sins, even though we could have. Christ, have mercy. For those times we didn't trust in the intercession of our brothers and sisters, of those here on earth and those in the presence of God the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, 
Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body, soul, into the heavenly glory, we pray that, always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of Apocalypse. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman adorned with a sun. The sanctuary of God in heaven opened and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside it. Now, a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labor, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, a large red dragon which had seven heads and ten horns, and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky and dropped them to the earth. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child, so that he could eat as soon as it, it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world, the son who was to rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And the child was taken straight up to God and to his throne while the woman escaped into the desert where God had made a place of safety ready. Then I heard a voice shout from heaven, victory and power and empire forever have been won by our God and all authority for his Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response real psalm. Your response will be, the queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The queen stands at your right hand arrayed in gold. The daughters of kings are among your loved ones. On your right stands the queen in gold of Ophir. Listen, O daughter, Give ear to my words. Forget your own people and your father's house. Your response? The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your lord. Pay homage to him. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. Your response? The queen stands at your right hand, arrayed in gold. A second reading, a reading from the book of 1 Corinthians. Christ will be brought to life as a first fruits and then those who belong to him. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in their proper order. Christ as the first fruits, and then, after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. 
After that will come the end when he hands over the kingdom of God, the Father. Having done away with every sovereignty, authority and power, for he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death, for everything is to be put under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mary is taken up to heaven and the angels of God shout for joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went in haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there were to be a fulfillment and that was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then return to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Three misconceptions about Mary. I want to clarify a few things because I get so much criticism when I put my homilies on social media, especially when I talk about Mary. Let me clarify three important, essential things. I've even written them down here to make sure that I'm clear with you here. The first misconception, one, is that Mary is a mediator and not an intercessor. So that, that's a misconception. Number one, Mary is an intercessor. She is not a mediator. She cannot take us to the Father. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. But what is Mary's role then? Well, Mary's role is to pray for us, to pray for us, to, she barracks for us, she sides for us to make sure that we get to heaven. She knows the heart of Jesus and she can pray according to that heart for us. She loves us and so she is vicious in praying for us. You have no more powerful prayer than a, a mother praying for a child because they will be relentless in their prayer. The second misconception is the comments I get. Where is that in the Bible? Well, the misconception is that it is not in the Bible. Well, it is in the Bible. I'll give you a few quotes. Revelations chapter 5 verse 8. The saints pray for us in heaven. They pray for us through their, their closeness with God. There is no death in the kingdom of heaven. So they continue to pray for us there to make sure that we too pass the line and get to heaven. Another scripture verse is 2 Maccabees 15. Now, the Protestant will be there saying, where, what is that book that's been taken out? That's been taken out by Luther, that's been taken out through the ages. The, as Catholics, we believe this to be part of the canon. We know this to be part of the canon. 2 Maccabees chapter 15 also says that the saints pray for us there in heaven, bringing us to heaven. 
The third one is Tobit chapter 12. Look all of these up. There is scriptural proof, evidence that Mary, as one of the saints in heaven, is praying for us. That's the second misconception that there's no mention of Mary, the saints praying for us in heaven. The third misconception is that the rosary is worshiping Mary. We worship Mary. We don't worship Mary. We venerate Mary. Big difference. The, to worship something is to put them up. It's, it's to acknowledge them as, as God. But to venerate is to look at them and think, man, I want to be like you. I want to love Jesus like you do. And I honor you because you honored the Lord, the one I love. We don't meditate on Mary during the rosary. We quote scripture as we have quoted in today's reading. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Those are the words of Elizabeth when she visited Mary. And we pray for her intercession now and at the hour of our death as Tobit, as the book of Revelation, as Maccabees tells us to do. She is our intercessor. She is not our mediator. It is in the scripture and we don't worship her, but we venerate her because there's no one in history who loved Jesus like Mary loves Jesus. And so now as a family that trusts in the Lord, our Lord, our God, our mediator, the one who leads us to the Father, let us proclaim our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. And so now we bring our prayers to the Lord God Almighty, who hears our prayer through the intercession of Mary. And we pray for the world. We pray for world leaders. We pray for those who are in charge of our economies, those in charge of our societies, that they may love Jesus and point us to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us. We pray for nations and countries that are struggling financially, those that are struggling with poverty, refugees who are trying to find a home, a place. Lord, give your people refuge. Lord, hear us. Now just bring your own prayers to the Lord, the Lord who answers, knows your heart and ha answers your prayers. Lord Jesus, thank you for hearing these prayers, which we bring to you through the intercession of Mary, our mother, as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life to you everything I've been through use it for your glory Lord I offer my taste to you lifting my praise 
praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice. Lord, I offer you my life. Things in the past, things yet unseen, wishes and dreams that I yet to come true. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, will become our spiritual drink. Lord, I offer my life to you, everything I've been through, use it for your glory, Lord, I offer my days to you, lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sacrifice Lord I offer you my life So pray my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of Christ's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you who would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of life. And so in the company with the choir of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Shane, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
This is my daily bread This is my daily bread Your very word Spoken to me me just at this moment to pray for you, to pray for the Holy Spirit, to pray that you will love Jesus as Mary loves Jesus. Lord Jesus, I ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon every person, that they may experience your love, that they may know your presence, that they may cooperate, Lord, with your movement. Lord, let them not be afraid of you, afraid of your presence in their life, afraid to say yes as Mary said yes. Come, Holy Spirit, and take away the fear, the anxiety, the stress on your people as they turn to you, as they know they should trust in you. Let them trust. Let them let go. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're healing your people. Someone, Lord, you're healing from a hip problem. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're healing someone from a pain on their neck. God, you are an awesome God, and we praise you. Together, let us pray an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Once again, on behalf of FRG Ministry, thank you for joining us for this time of prayer. I hope you can join us for Mass also this coming Sunday. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Because I'm no longer a slave to fear, because I am a child.
is only made possible because of the generous support of FRG Ministry partners and donors. Please go to frgministry.com slash donate to make a donation. Encounter Youth by FRG Ministry presents Making Christian Decisions. Join Alyssa Aegis, Justine Combo, and Father Rob Gallia in this curriculum-based online course that covers factors that influence decision-making, the role of our conscience, how to discern right from wrong, and the importance of reflection and making amends when things go wrong. This course ultimately aims to empower students to make fulfilling and meaningful choices. Complete with high-definition teaching videos and interactive student and teacher PDFs with lesson plans, class activities, and more. This is an outstanding resource for your classroom and youth group. Get access to this course in our entire course library at EncounterCourses.com slash subscription. This production would not be possible without the support of our FRG ministry partners and donors. Your ongoing support ensures that our online masses, online courses, podcasts, TV programs, school youth and parish outreaches continue to reach millions of people across the world. Please prayerfully consider giving a one-off donation or becoming an ongoing ministry partner and join us in our mission to share the love of Jesus and his message of hope to the ends of the earth. Find out more at frgministry.com slash donate.